So I want to discuss Thermal Runaway. This is really stemming from the 18650 cell that I had in the e-bike battery that had a safeguard that disconnect the positive terminal. And I was able to push that back down and discovered that it had lost about a third of its capacity. But this one's actually charged, but I'm charging up another of the same cell and I'm gonna run a discharge on both of these at a thousand milliamps and use the thermal camera to see how hot they get. You know, so that's, that cell didn't explode. Um, but you know, some, some cells can, and it's a serious risk. And the thermal runaway is really the, uh, the major risk with these cells. It seems like something that is worth investigating. And I have to give a shout out to my buddy, Brian Boshane, who kindly pointed out that I should throw away my damaged cell. Um, and clearly I didn't heed his advice. So hopefully it doesn't blow up in my face, especially not, not on this video. Um, anyway, what is thermal runaway? And this is all from my research and from what I can tell. So feel free to leave comments for the discussion. Um, but from what I can tell, a thermal runaway is when a cell reaches a critical temperature that causes a virtually uncontrollable reaction that dissipates all of the cell's energy instantaneously. Kind of like a nuclear meltdown. If you can control the cell's temperature, that is, keep it cool, then the thermal runaway should not occur. And from what I can tell, the temperature at which thermal runaway would occur on an 18650 cell is um, 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm sure it's different for different cells. Um, with different compositions and all cells handle it differently as well um, because this is a fatal problem for these cells you can imagine that manufacturers do build safeguards into them and that only gets better as we uh, progress so how can we get a cell from 60 degrees fahrenheit to the critical 220 degrees fahrenheit and i say 60 degrees because if your cells are sitting in a basement, that might be roughly what the temperature is. So, to get from 60 to 220, we have to add 160 degrees Fahrenheit of heat. We have to heat this cell up to get it to that critical temperature. Now, a cell's temperature could increase for many reasons. Um, typically, when you're discharging a cell, you know, the, the temperature does increase. Um, cells are rated for certain discharge currents and you could have excessive current. Um, you could be overcharging the cell. Um, it could also just be a lack of cooling. So there's lots of reasons. Um, and I think the one that I would like to attack is um, a cell shorting. Because a lot of the time you see these battery packs where cells are built so close together that they literally could short out on each other. So it begs the question, how many degrees can I raise the cell with its own energy? So, assuming, here's another one, assuming that this is a 3.7 volt, 1000 milliamp hour cell, that means that we have 3.7 watt hours. And you can convert watt hours into BTUs and that is approximately 12.62 BTUs. Now, one BTU can raise water, sorry, not water, one pound of water, <laughs> one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. An 18650 cell weighs about one tenth of a pound. So I think it would be safe to say that one BTU could raise a single 18650 cell by 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have 12.62 BTUs available in a 1000 milliamp hour battery, or cell, that means that you can raise the temperature by 126 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you add the initial temperature there, the temperature that we would get to 
would be 186. And 186 degrees Fahrenheit is less than the critical temperature. So, no problem there then. Um, what if it was a 1500 milliamp hour cell? Well, then we would be able to raise it by approximately 189. And if you add the base temperature again, you would be able to hit 249 degrees Fahrenheit. And there we have exceeded the magic number. And bearing in mind that 1500 milliamp hours, that's not that much. Um, lots of the cells you get are going to be above 2000 milliamp hours. And if I'm building a power wall or any kind of battery and I have higher capacity cells available, I'm going to use them because it's a much better return on my investment. Um, you know, cells that are cells that are 1500 milliamp hours are the kind of cells that I would put into one of these uh, mobile batteries because it's quick to put them in there, not much time, and it makes a cheap but decent battery charger. So therein lies the problem that a high capacity cell could actually push itself to thermal runaway. Um, just under its own energy. So how do you stop it? Um, so from what I can tell, tell the trick, besides uh, the design of the cell being able to handle a thermal runaway, um, the trick is to really dissipate the heat as quickly as you can to avoid hitting that critical temperature. So we're down here and we're dissipating heat and if we start to increase this temperature, we need to get rid of the heat somehow. Um, and how do we cool these cells? Well, in, um, in a lot of power walls that I've seen, they're in a grid formation and the heat can be transferred uh, via the surrounding air and also to other cells via the mechanical connection. Um, now, if you're using fuses as the mechanical connection, on both ends of the cell, then <laughs> you don't have much material to transfer the heat. And if you don't have any movement of air, then the air is going to be quickly, is going to quickly become saturated with heat and its effect on cooling is going to be minimized. Um, so um, in my case, I would connect at least one end of the cells with nickel strip. Um, and so is the mechanical connection enough to remove the heat. Obviously, everything is going to take some of the heat away from the cell. Um, but it's worth bearing in mind that when, when a cell shorts out, especially if it's a high performance cell, which a lot of the time when you're testing these cells, you don't know if it's high performance or not. Some cells can put out 10 amps, some cells can put out 100 amps. Um, but suppose, suppose you have a high performance cell and you, you have it putting out 60 amps. And just for the sake of um, figuring this out, let's assume that there's no performance drop and we're running at a constant 3.7 volts. Um, what does that put us at? Well, I'll just use my calculator because I can't figure that out in my head. So that would put us, that would put us at 222 watts. And if you were to do that for an hour, you'd be getting 757 BTUs. Um, based on that, if you have 757 BTUs and you divide that by the number of seconds in an hour, that means that for every second we are releasing Point two one zero two uh, BTUs. So, how many BTUs do we need to push the cell to catastrophic failure? Well, knowing that um, one BTU can raise the cell by 10 degrees, and we have to raise by 160 degrees, that means we need 16 BTUs. And if we divide that by 0 0.2102, what do we get? we get 
0.11 seconds. So, a cell discharging at 60 amps, assuming it has enough total energy, which a 1500 milliamp hour cell theoretically does, would reach a catastrophic temperature in 76 seconds unless it is able to dissipate the heat. So, you have one minute to run for your life. That's wonderful. Um, so what do, what do you do to avoid that? So I have a, a few thoughts on that. I want to show you guys the lithium ion power reservoir and what I think would be worth doing. So here's the negative side of the cell block. And I think what I would like to do, maybe I can push this back a little more so you can see it. Yep, here we go. So what I would like to do is, bearing in mind that this would be in a square case, I would like to add a vent here and here and have a fan that pushes air through channels inside of these cells because there's, there's gaps right here under, underneath this. So you could add some card to kind of push the air around. So I'd have air coming down here and just kind of running through the cells. Um, I think that would work well. Um, they would You'd have some air bypassing it and as the cells heat up, the air would cool them back down. But also, I think it would be worthwhile adding um, thermal pads to the negative ends of these cells. Like these, for example, and linking those thermal pads to a sheet of aluminum so that if a cell starts to get really hot, it can quickly dissipate its heat and spread it across the aluminum. And that would give you much better surface area um, for the cooling of that particular cell. We wouldn't be relying on the pure nickel strip and you'd really have a dedicated pad for the cooling. Um, so besides that, obviously you would need a fan. And also I think that personally, I would be fusing each one of these cells at one amp or less. Um, I wouldn't expect one of these power reservoirs to be putting out enormous amounts of power. Um, I would expect them to charge quicker than they discharge. So, you know, it's all stuff to think about and discuss. But uh, but hopefully, hopefully it's um, some good theory there. So feel free to leave your comments. And, you know, if you have any ideas on this, let me know. I think that people need to take the thermal runaway more seriously. And there's probably a bunch of 18650s that I, I would throw away because I'm never going to use them, you know, with the risk that, that they've been damaged. Um, but I don't think, I personally don't think that an 18650 sitting by itself would go into thermal runaway. Unless it's hot, then it could. Anyway, leave some comments and look out for another video where I actually end up testing the discharge on these cells and seeing what temperature they hit. All right, see ya.